in this week's Signal Omitted. 4.6 Def 5 release, 4.6 Def 6 release, and of course there's our Creative Spotlight, Game of the Week, and Tip of the Week. Welcome to Signal Omitted, your weekly news feature for Godot related news. I'm Voilin, and did I get colder? It has finally arrived! The feature freeze for Godot 4.6. This week we didn't get one but two dev releases for the 4.6 update with one big change which got announced in the last one. For the past dev and beta releases it was always the case that the first beta release would mark the start of the feature freeze. But starting from this version 4.6 dev 6 release the Godot team is doing things slightly different with making the last dev release a feature freeze instead and not the first beta release. So not too much will change for people who just test or use the engine. It's more like a developer thing. But anyway, talking about change, let's go over some of the new items that we got in these two new dev releases. So first of all, Direct3D 12 will become the default renderer on Windows. It used to be Vulkan, same as the default on Linux. This does give some improved stability compared to using Vulkan on Windows. Then we also have Delta encoded patch PCKs which will allow for exporting only byte level differences, so thereby shrinking patch sizes. This allows for creating updates to your game in a more space saving and bandwidth saving way. This is a feature which is not enabled by default, however, you do need to enable it yourself if you want to use this. And then we also have Android Gradle builds that can now be triggered directly from Android devices. Then we also have a big 2D rendering optimization, which significantly improves the GPU bound performance, ranging from a performance boost of 1.1 times to 7 times as fast as before. And GDScript gets Tracy profile support. This enables deep performance profiling for your projects to see where things are going wrong, what is taking a lot of memory and such. Although this is only for the Tracy profiler as of now, this is a big step in allowing more well, other dedicated profilers to be used with Godot in the future. And then also Android gains full storage access framework support, letting users open and save any file through the system file picker without special storage permissions. And of course, as with any dev release, with uh, dev uh, 5 and 6, there are also a lot more smaller stuff. I won't go too much into detail, but we will soon go over all the big changes which will come in the next 4.6 release. That will probably be somewhere next week or next, next week, because this week and next week is a very busy period for me because of Advent of Code. If you don't know what this is, Advent of Code is, then hold on tight. It is a season of programming challenges that goes from the 1st of December all the way to Christmas. Well, this year until the 12th of December. But anyway, it's a season of programming challenges and I am doing daily live streams right now to solve these puzzles in Godot with GD scripts. If you can, I would really appreciate you to drop by and say hi in the stream and maybe stick around and chat for some time. I live stream on Twitch and YouTube. So yeah, come and hang out if you have time. And since I've been very into live streaming recently, I got to meet some other live streamers this week that are kind of Godot related. So for this week's Creator Spotlight, I present to you Hyper Game Dev. You can follow her both on Twitch and YouTube and her streams are about making games live with one of her recent projects being a Tamagotchi-like game, which she made for a game jam. She is learning game development in a public and sharing setting. Her live streams are all about learning game dev and sharing the whole game dev journey. Give her live streams a try. There's a very nice atmosphere going on there and it's always fun to see other people working on God Over Later projects. So there will be a link in the description. Check it out. And just like many other big open source projects, December is a very important month because of donations. That is probably because December is kind of seen as a month of giving. And if you were to visit the Godot website right now, you'll see a banner asking people to donate. If everybody who visits the site would donate five euros, the Godot engine will be able to hire five more full-time developers to work on Godot. If you have in any way earned some amount of revenue from Godot, or you really like using Godot and you want the whole engine to grow faster with more exciting new features every version, consider donating to the engine directly. There will be a link in the description. And do you enjoy coding in Godot? But sometimes you wish it was a little bit more difficult, spectacular and um, ridiculous? Well, give this add-on a try. Ridiculous coding makes coding in Godot more, 
well, ridiculous. With screen shakes, flashy colors, and the feeling like you're in a game arcade. I know one thing, I'm sharing this now, but I will not be the one who will be using it anytime soon. And then let's go over to Game of the Week. And for Game of the Week, I present to you Tower Wizard. If you like pixel art style games with bit style music, you will love this one. Tower Wizard is an incremental game made by the creator Baribot, in which you help a wizard build and upgrade a wizard tower, use the tower to study magic, summon spirits, create buildings and influence the world. This game got released in June this year and it has been getting thousands of very positive reviews. If you haven't already and this game looks very interesting to you, you should really check this game out. As usual, there will be a link in the description. And then let's go over to tip of the week. Ever wanted to not use the mouse when working in Godot and you want to keep your hands on the keyboard but you don't know the specific shortcut for specific actions well I got a tip for you if you press ctrl shift p you open the commands palette with this you can basically open any sub menu or use any commands you might have a need to and it will work <laughs> this is one of these tiny little features about Godot that once you get used to using it you'll just keep using it and anyway, that's it for this episode. This episode is a little bit shorter than normal because I'm very busy with Advent of Code right now. So if you want to join the live streams of me solving programming puzzles with GD scripts, please subscribe. And before I go, a quick mention to all my COVID supporters. Thank you very much for supporting me. This year has been amazing with the amount of support that I've gotten through Kofi. I hope next year I can make it even better and provide more value for COVID supporters. But anyway, Thank you for watching, subscribe if you want to stay up to date. Signal Minute is a weekly news series, so next week, probably on Saturday again, you'll get a new episode. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you all next time. Bye bye.